I hereby call call this uh, meeting to order and uh, ask everyone to take a seat, please. I'm, <clears throat> we have uh, introduction of special guest, Mike Thompson from ACEC, uh, Paul Zachary from the city of Tulsa, uh, Randy Robinson from Circuit Engineers, uh, the district and uh, Representative Lawson. We're, thank you for having the guest. Uh, the, the commission acknowledges members of the public attending this meeting who are possibly impacted by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority Access Oklahoma program. This is a public meeting, not a public hearing. This meeting will proceed with specific published agenda in accordance with the Open Meeting Act at this point, I will ask uh, the uh, Commission Secretary to call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn here. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley here. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller here. Mr. McCowan? McCowan here. Mr. Dyson? Dyson here. Mr. Alexander? Alexander here. Mr. LaForge? LaForge here. Mr. Peterson? Here. New Transportation Quality Engineer. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. The department's pleased to announce Mr. Matt Swift to his new role as transportation quality engineer. It's a new position to the department. It's been established to implement a more robust quality assurance and quality control program as it relates to plan development and the projects associated with all of our various transportation programs. The department recognizes that it's ever more critical to deliver projects which are adequately, economically, and safely designed, constructible, and maintainable. Mr. Swift will be revising and developing new guidelines as well as leading a cross-functional team to review in-house and consult consultant developed infrastructure projects being led through the department. Further developing quality control, quality assurance guidelines tailored to meet the requirements for ODOT, local government, and the OTA projects will ever be more critical with quickly evolving technologies. Mr. Swift brings with him six years of experience as a division engineer for the Strategic Asset and Performance Management Division, four years as our state pavement engineer, as well as eight years as project engineer in roadway design. Please help me welcome Matt to his new role. Thank you. At this time, I'll recognize the Secretary of, the, of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, Certainly want to acknowledge Matt and uh, how excited we are to have him in the, his, the, the new role that he's going to uh, work into. Uh, going to be extremely critical for us to uh, continue to maintain uh, and enhance the quality of all the services that we deliver. So I uh, appreciate Matt and his willingness to undertake that role. I stand before you today for a pretty special recognition. Uh, Ms. Terry Angier. Uh, despite my best efforts to talk her out of it, uh, has uh, informed me that uh, she's going to retire. And I want to recognize her this morning uh, for her 32 years of, of service with the Department of Transportation. To call her service mer meritorious uh, would be not adequate. So I can tell you that she has done us an exceptional job. Uh, she has excelled in every role uh, that she's ever been in with the Department of Transportation, uh, most recently serving as my interagency liaison uh, as I transitioned into the secretarial role, and uh, she's been invaluable. We are going to miss her institutional knowledge and perspective uh, on everything that's gone on with the Department of Transportation, and uh, again, we're going to be sorry to see her go. Uh, but we are so happy for her uh, in retirement, and we certainly wish her well. One of the things that the Department of Transportation does uh, for individuals is uh, kind of the equivalent of having your number retired, uh, if you're a professional football player, and that is to present Terry with a brick that's got her name on it, and this is a brick that came from Route 66. Um, and again, these are very special and reserved for uh, folks who are uh, 
have really done an exceptional job. And I want to tell you what uh, the BRIC says. Uh, the Oklahoma Department of Transportation recognizes Terry Angier, uh, Interagency Liaison and PR, PR Advisor to Secretary Gatz for her 32 years of service to the Transportation Cabinet. A consummate professional, Terry's contributions to citizens and Oklahoma transportation include award-winning campaigns, ODOT's 100th anniversary and communications leadership on historic funding reforms, the I-40 crosstown relocation, and unparalleled crisis communications during the Weber's Falls I-40 bridge disaster, among others. The department is proud to present her with this commemorative brick from historic Route 66 in Arcadia in honor of her retirement. And this brick is signed by Governor Stitt, uh, Chairman McCown, and myself. So Terry, if you would come forward. Congratulations. I'm gonna set this right over here. Mr. Chairman, if we would like, if you would uh, be so kind, I'd uh, appreciate the opportunity for Terry to address the commission. Yes, yes. I have worked so hard not to be emotional and they stand for me, so mm -hmm. thank you. Um, good morning, Chairman McCown, commissioners. Thank you, Secretary, and my esteemed colleagues. Uh, it has been an absolute honor to work with each and every one of you and I be able to work with you before I retire. That's probably why I stayed, right? <laughs> For a few more years. But um, ODOT has made so many different prog uh, accomplishments in the last few decades. It's just hard to um, list them. But I always credit every one of you every commission member, every secretary, every director, all the governors over the years, the legislature, my esteemed colleagues behind me, the industry partners, and the citizens of Oklahoma, including my friends in the media who told our story uh, for all the accomplishments we've had over the years. Um, interestingly enough, I can claim to have worked for every secretary of transportation ever since that office was instituted in uh, the Bellman administration. So you see why I'm old enough to retire now. Um, but um, I will always hope to be remembered by placing the citizens of Oklahoma first and foremost in everything I did. They are the most amazing citizens they're friendly, kind, they made my job easy. You know, my job was to take complaints and I can tell you in my 32 years, I can count the number of times that someone may not have been reasonable. The most kind people in Oklahoma and I've had the honor of serving every one of them and I hope to have left that legacy at the walls of ODOT for our generations to come. Um, again, thank you for this honor. Um, this brick means more to me than you realize with some background stories. Uh, but it was pretty difficult <laughs> not to be part of writing for this one. <laughs> so thank you again for the honor and I appreciate all the professionalism and dedication you've given to the department as well. Thank you. Terry, In behalf of the commissioners, uh, I can't express to you what you uh, looking after me has meant <laughs> the last four years. Uh, I hope someone uh, that tries to take your job can keep me as organized. Uh, I, it, it's hard to get all these things put together for this meeting, but you, you've just really made this wonderful. And, we, we really, really appreciate you. It's been my pleasure. I always say the secretaries give me all the credit, but you're much like the 
I, I feel like the Maytag repairman. You've done, you've done your own job and given me the credit. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. At this point, uh, will it, uh, I need a motion for the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Coburn. Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, abstain. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. We had a unanimous vote. Uh, this time we will have the consent docket to be presented by. Uh, there's item number uh, 86, 7, 8, 89, and 90. These items were discussed in the detail in detail earlier in the subcommittee meetings. Uh, if any commissioners would like to pull an individual item out of the discussion, he may do so at this time. Otherwise, do I hear a motion for approval of the consent docket? So moved, Grimsley. Do I have a second? Second, Coburn. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. The, <clears throat> the results was a unanimous vote. After a vote, moved to item number 91. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Item 91 are my engineering contracts this month. I have two statewide contracts and four project-specific contracts. Part A is statewide all districts on-demand bridge assessment. The department has selected four firms to provide bridge assessments. They are Burgess and Nipel, Consor Engineers, H.W. Lochner, and Walter P. Moore and Associates. The aggregate not to exceed amount for these four contracts is $1 million. Part B is a statewide all districts are on-demand engineering services for strategic asset and performance management. We have selected six firms to provide this service. They are Garver, HNTB Corporation, High Street Consulting Group, Jacobs Engineering Group, Embro Engineering, and Olson. The aggregate not to exceed amount for these six contracts is $2,500,000. Part C, Adair County, District 1. Department selected Walter P. Moore and Associates to prepare construction plans for US 59. Total not to exceed amount is $1,250,420. These projects are in the eight year construction work plan, scheduled let date of 2028. Part D in Cherokee County, District 1. Department selected Grossman and Keith Engineering to prepare construction plans for State Highway 100. Total not to exceed amount is $1,003,180. The project is included in the eight-year construction work plan with a scheduled let date in 2029. Part E in Wagner County, also in District 1. The department has selected H.W. Lochner to prepare construction plans for U.S. 64. Total not to exceed amount is $1,336,640. This project is also in the eight-year construction work plan with a let date of 2028. And finally, Part F in Mays County. The department has selected Garver to prepare construction plans for State Highway 82. The total not to exceed amount is $1,272,667. This project is also included in the eight-year construction work plan for a scheduled let date in 2026. Approval is recommended, and I'll take any questions if you have any this morning. The, the, for the A and B, is that money just divided equally among the engineers uh part a yes part b we're going to try to keep it as equal as we can and okay. yeah that's All right. where we're going with that and for part c that that project so we're spending a million two on walter p moore and the whole project's going to cost two million that um, seems a little out of whack the good question there the current uh, projects that are in the eight-year construction work plan are the right-of-way and, and utilities so what we're doing is they're in the process of uh doing their eight-year uh, rebalance at this point right and they're going to be getting the construction plan in the program probably this next following so year. that two million is going up yes sir yeah all right makes sense thank you mm -hmm. 
You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval of item number 92? So moved. Do I have second. a second? Second, Alexander. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. <coughs> continue item 92 are the engineering contract supplements they have three parts this month part a is our muskogee county and district one previously authorized white engineering associates now cec corporation to prepare construction plans for state highway 100 the supplement not to exceed amount is ninety eight thousand four hundred dollars this project is in the eight-year construction work plan let date of 2026 part b in cleveland county district three Firm previous, previously authorized Triad Design Group to perform preliminary engineering and prepare construction plans for Indian Hills Road Bridge over I-35. Supplement not to exceed amount is $545,216. This project is in the eight-year construction work plan schedule at date of 2024. And finally, Part C in Ellis County, District 6. The department previously authorized tri Triad Design Group to perform preliminary engineering and prepare construction plans for State Highway 15. Supplement not to exceed amount is $3,427. This project is in the eight-year construction work plan in 2023. Uh, approval is recommended. Try to answer any questions if you gentlemen have any this morning. Yeah, yeah I have a question because we did yep. discuss this earlier. So on item B, um, that is essentially in the eight-year plan for the Indian Hills Bridge, which is one of the proposed turnpike routes. Right. And so what you're asking for in this is a service road you're not asking to proceed correct right uh, it has been put on hold but we still have to do some upfront uh, okay. preliminary operational analysis and the access justification report because it's on i-35 so we're looking upstream and downstream of this so we're going to be doing some of the reviewing of the operational analysis as we see it today <laughs> you've heard the presentation do i have a motion for approval make motion to approve here second. second peterson <clears throat> any discussion please call the roll mr coburn coburn yes mr grimsley grimsley yes mr frymiller frymiller yes mr mccown mccown yes mr dyson dyson yes mr alexander alexander yes mr laforge laforge yes mr peterson yes thank you gentlemen thank you item number 93 Let's change orders with cumulative total of less than $75,000. Mr. Leonard, you recognize to present. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, item 93, parts A through K. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders of $75,000 or less. This item is presented for your information only and no action is necessary, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. These change orders were discussed in detail in our subcommittee meetings. If there's no questions, Mr. Leonard, you may be recognized to present item number 94, change orders with cumulative value of greater than $75,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'd like to present item 94, parts A through AA. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders greater than $75,000. Your approval is recommended, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval? LaForge move for approval. Coburn second. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Thank you. You've heard the presentation. Do it. We've had the vote. It passed unanimous, excuse me. Um, item number 95 is proposed bid openings. Uh, Mrs. Helms, you're recognized. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. <clears throat> Agenda item 95 is for the proposed bid openings, and it consists of the revised August 2022, the tentative September, and the tentative October, in the amounts of $202 million for the August bid opening, 170 million and 156 million. The department requests and recommends approval of this revised August and tentative September and tentative October 22 bid openings. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval of item 95? Motion, so, Dyson. Peterson, second. 
Any discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? Passed by unanimous vote. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Oh. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Uh, now, it, you got a unanimous vote. I'm sorry, I was reading here and got off, off the line. Item number 96 is a presentation of county improvement for roads and bridges. Uh, Ms. Williams, will you recognize to present this? Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, agenda item 96 is the presentation of the county improvements for roads and bridges. I want to bring your attention to a Scrivener's area. area error first um, recent legislation allowed us to increase the funding and we had a request after this material was put out um, to add some additional projects so you'll see that reflected in the numbers um, this is a five-year plan and it will be presented for your approval it's annually updated and developed collaboratively by ODOT the county commissioners and the circuit engineering districts they represent projects of the highest priority in each ODOT field district. This fund provides an avenue for counties to improve transportation infrastructure as well as leverage nearly $208 million in federal and tribal funds over the next five years. The $719 million five-year plan replaces 192 bridges, 84 of which are structurally deficient or functionally obsolete. There are 398 miles of county roadway improvements as part of this plan. I ask for your approval of agenda item 96. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval of item 96? Frank Miller approves. You'll hear a second. Peterson, second. Any discussions? Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Passed by unanimous vote. Okay. Item, item 97 is the Municipal Road Drilling Activity Revolving Fund. Ms. Williams, you're recognized to present. Thank you. Agenda item 97 does not require action, but it's an informational item about a newly created fund, the Municipal Road Drilling Activity Revolving Fund. This fund was established under House Bill 3037 with the intent of assisting municipalities under population 15,000 in repairing roadway damage caused by increased oil field activities. The legislation tasked ODOT with administration of this $5 million annual program. These are state funds that will be provided 75% of the cost with a matching 25% required by the city. I'll take any questions if you have any. There's no commission action no, on sir. that. You may move to item, item number 98, off-system bridge funding. All right, agenda item 98 is also an informational item regarding the funding commitment of new bridge formula program funds that were made available as part of the new federal funding bill. Just as the department made a commitment to reduce the number of structurally deficient bridges on the highway system, it also recognizes the importance of reducing the number of off-system structurally deficient bridges and is making a $28 million annual commitment to further that cause. In an effort to move the needle on structurally deficient bridges statewide, the department will implement a scour mitigation plan as well as a city SD bridge program, which targets structurally deficient bridges on both the city and the county system. Today, the number of off-system city and county SD bridges is 1,706. The goal of these two programs is to correct the structural excuse me, the structural deficiency of nearly 1,000 bridges over the next five years. I appreciate the commitment by Secretary Gatz and the department in recognizing it's an investment in our transportation system. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Remind me of the amount of money being allocated to this, Shelley. Initially, it was 53 million statewide. 8 million was required to be put on the off system, um, but the commitment is 28 million. Over what time period? Five years. Five years. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Item number 99 is a request for OTA to connect to the Turnpike Extension. 
to the Department of Highway System. Uh, Mr. Gatz, turn it to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, we have discussed Access Oklahoma Turnpike uh, enhancement and expansion 15-year long-range plan several times recently. Uh, Access Oklahoma represents major reinvestments back into the existing turnpike network and also includes additional phases, uh, development, and construction of several previously identified routes. OTA and ODOT are always and always have been enjoined in both statute and through the numerous interchange and partnership locations across the tax-supported highway system and the turnpike network. This partnership is essential to providing Oklahoma citizens and other travelers with the most robust and safest transportation opportunities possible. The Transportation Commission's role in considering OTA proposed turnpike routes is to ratify that ODOT acknowledges the need that tax-supported resources do not exist to implement an appropriate solution to the recognized transportation needs and that ODOT is generally agreeable to any necessary connections to the tax-supported highway system. In particular, the recent discussions with the Commission have focused on the current and future challenges represented in the Interstate 35 corridor in, general, in the general Oklahoma City metropolitan area and how OTA is working with ODOT to properly recognize and address the growing traffic volumes and safety needs for Oklahoma's future. The needs have been projected and the described routes have been contemplated since the late 80s and early 90s. Today, ODOT and the Turnpike Authority engineers believe the construction of these turnpike routes over the course of the coming 15 years is critical to our ability to manage traffic in the metropolitan area of Oklahoma City and especially in the Interstate 44 and Interstate 35 corridors. The OTA board approved the request for Transportation Commission consideration of these routes as proposed on June the 9th, 2022, as part of several ag agenda items that will lead to an application for judicial determination of associated bonds through the validation of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. The validation of the proposed bonds by the Supreme Court is the most conclusive manner in which to resolve any legal questions or issues related to OTA's authorization and ability to construct these routes and any who disagree may contest that authorization in that proceeding. While it's unfortunate that the District 3 Commissioner is currently vacant and acknowledging district-based appointments, uh, the Commission collectively acts in the interest and oversight of transportation in the state of Oklahoma and it is timely and appropriate to consider the item as presented today. The routes are subject to further refinement until all property, cultural and natural resource, environmental and engineering impacts are carefully considered, avoided, minimized or mitigated. While generalized routes have been discussed, evaluated and studied many times over the years, detailed engineering work on the proposed routes as currently depicted is just now beginning. Property owners that may be concerned uh, will be considered and route adjustments and regulatory compliance activities will be implemented as required over the course of a lengthy, very open, deliberate, and meticulous document, meticulously documented project development and right-of-way acquisition process. Uh, and again, to add emphasis, uh, we will do our best to address uh, property owner and public concerns as we continue with the development of the projects uh, and we're just getting started in this uh, endeavor. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I would ask that you recognize Chief Engineer Brian Taylor for presentation of the item. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, in accordance with the provisions of Title 69, Section 1701, the Oklahoma State Statutes, the Department has received a request for the review and approval of proposed turnpike alignments as encompassed by the Access Oklahoma program. The proposed alignments are depicted in the attached, attached graphics and are further described as follows. Part A, Outer Loop, Tri-City Connector, the construction includes a new connection from the John Kilpatrick Terminus at 152 
around the Will Rogers World Airport to I-44, north of the South Canadian River. This project will connect Southwest Oklahoma City in the metro area and continue the outer loop. It will increase access and offer alternative routes from I-40 to I-44 and ultimately I-35. The projects include interchanges at I-44 and State Highway 152. Part B, Outer Loop, East-West Connector. The construction includes a new East-West Turnpike from I-44, Tri-City Area, Newcastle, Blanchard, Tuttle, at State Highway 37, crossing the South Canadian River east to I-35, then continuing east along Indian Hills and then northeast to I-40, connecting to the new Kick Kickapoo Turnpike. This project expands the mobility of the South Oklahoma City Metro by providing greater access to Moore and Norman while continuing the outer loop. Part C, South Extension Turnpike. The extension of the east-west connector south to I-35 near Purcell expands the mobility of the Southeast Oklahoma City Metro by providing greater access to local communities. This will be a vital corridor for the transportation network of Central Oklahoma by providing an alternate route to I-35 for traffic between Southern, Eastern, and Northeastern Oklahoma. The department has completed a review of the proposed alignments and believes that these turnpike system additions will significantly enhance the safety and functionality of the existing transportation system and highways in the area and is anticipated to subsequently reduce the number and severity of accidents. The department has long recognized the need for expansion as described, but does not have the resources to locate, uh, construct and maintain the critical additions. The department recommends your approval for the proposed locations. Um, and I stand for your questions. We also have Joe E. Kelly uh, with the Turnpike Authority, the Deputy Director and Chief Engineer, and we stand uh, for your questions. Um, I'll just speak just for myself here, but uh, I think all of us were sent uh, Dr. Serrato's report, which I have read her letter several times in the attachments. Um, she raises some points that I hadn't contemplated or wasn't even aware of, and if I can ask you just a few questions, Brian. The Ports to Plains Corridor, I-27, talks about uh, shifting some traffic. Um, do you have a comment on that? Yes, sir. So Ports to Plains is uh, the future I-27. It'd be 287 going through Oklahoma, and we've done some future. We've done some projects going around Boys City. Um, the Ports to Plains is a route uh, that is not necessarily a priority route for the state of Texas, but it's just another route that they're trying to complete, and they have been working on it for decades, and they're going to be working on it for several more decades. The, that route connects uh, the Laredo, Texas area, the Lubbock area, and uh, it, it, it sends traffic towards Colorado and Denver. The major uh, users of that are for freight or will be crops and taking crops to the uh, Colorado Denver area. It's 250 miles west of I-35 and, and it's not completed today and won't be for decades. Even if it was, it would have little impact on the I-35 corridor. Yeah. All right. Um, again, I don't want to hog time here, Mr. Chairman, but um, there was also the comment that, that uh, ODOT's traffic projections have been substantially wrong and that we've way overestimated congestion. Can you speak to that? Yes, sir. I have complete confidence, and I would go back to the presentation that I made last month to you. Uh, that data that we <clears throat> used was public data. It was off a open and transparent uh, system that the public uses when they're filling out forms when they need to know what traffic volumes are. It's our most accurate information, uh, certainly public information. The calculations uh, to calculate those level of service was done as required. 
by the highway capacity manual. The highway capacity manual is the authority on all matters capacity related. Um, I would say that the growth uh, that we used was 3%, which is well within the range that that uh, corridor is experiencing. I stand behind that information. I find it complete and also very compelling. I believe it, um, it points to the need for an all of the above approach, not just a turnpike, but certainly the turnpike plays a big role in any approach to solve the problems this corridor is gonna experience. Uh, it, another thing in, along that line is she talked about um, the work from home. Now that's relatively a new phenomena, a COVID uh, induced. Um, we were experiencing at our company. Um, so does that indeed unload some of the congestion? So work from home is interesting. So we have a peak prior to teleworking, prior to COVID in the broad teleworking. We have peaks in traffic volumes and everybody calls it the you know, uh, that's the hour of traffic where the most congestion occurs. And what we've seen is, is although the peak may be a little bit lower, it's, it's wider. And so your delay could still be similar to what it was at peak. Also, we found out as teleworking um, that our peaks are wider, but also the number of trips have increased. So it's, it's quite interesting when you start looking at it, you would think that um, it would solve a lot of problems and that's not the case. All right, well, lastly, then I'll be quiet, I promise. Um, the, the concept of induced demand, which is a, a phrase I hadn't heard before, but it, it's that if you make traffic jams go away, then by building more roads, then you're gonna just cause more traffic jams. Well, thank you for your uh, question. Induced demand is a theory and I would go along with saying that induced demand could occur if we were talking about 12 lanes along I-35. But what we're talking about is we have three through lanes on I-35 and we, the problem with the corridor is, is our ability to widen it. Um, and so as a, so we're talking not 10 lanes, not 12 lanes, we're talking 68 lanes and uh, I don't believe induced demand is something that comes into play and interestingly enough when you start talking about induced demand the solution for induced demand uh, where it does occur and it's agreed that it has occurred is toll roads so that toll roads are the answer for induced demand I don't believe the scenario we have on I-35 can be characterized as induced demand all right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Okay, uh, actually, no, Dr. Serrato, um, she's a respected academic and also a licensed professional civil engineer. So her, her opinions carry a lot of weight and, and she would be recognized in a court of law as, a, as a, a very credible expert witness. And so a lot of what she said resonated with me. So I did some of my own research. Um, if you've ever heard me talk publicly, I'm not a big fan of building new highways. I think it destroys ecosystems and divides communities, destroys communities. I'm not a fan of that. I believe in Oklahoma, we've historically had an aversion to traffic engineering, and that is something that Dr. Serrato and I agree on. So this weekend I did some, some looking up on stats. Uh, in terms of raw number of highways, uh, miles, we rank number 14 in the, in the nation. In terms of population, we rank number 28. We have a lot of highways. What we don't have is traffic engineering. And I, I do think we need to spend a whole lot more time looking at these interchange problems. When we had the graph last month, what stood out to me were the interchanges. And I think there's more than enough opportunity that we need to be exploring fixing those interchanges and, and addressing that, but also just thinking more holistically across the state on traffic engineering. So the, I do, that res, her, her opinion and her comments resonate with me very much because it matches my own observations. I don't think it's a tenable future where we continue to build highways with no, no really limit on that because we're running into 50 to $60 million a mile. That's not sustainable. And then we have to turn around and maintain those. Uh, but the most important thing is, is uh, as a member of this commission, we, we represent the public. We do not represent ODOT. We're supposed to be here to protect the interests of the public. And one of the strong values that I brought with me is property rights. 
I do believe in sort of a sanctity of private property rights, and I also believe that something like eminent domain should be exceedingly difficult for the government. It's not something we should speed up. We should put a lot of restraints on that and tap on the brakes a lot. So this, this resonates with me. I can say this issue has weighed more on me than any issue since I've been on this commission. And, and, and um, I don't like to in the position I'm in right now, but I, I do, uh, I'm not going to abandon my own personal views and, and really the, the principles that I believe are important to carry to this commission. So anyway, I'll stop with that. Other, other comments on the commission? Thank you, Brian. At, at this point, uh, you've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for the approval of item 99? Move for approval of item 99, LaForge. Second, Alexander. We have a motion and a second. Uh, we've had discussion. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, no. Mr. Freimiller? Freimiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Shame. It passed by a vote of uh, seven to one. Uh, item number 100 is the awards of, uh, of, uh, of bids. Mr. Dells, you're recognized. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, item 100 will be presented in two parts this morning. Part A uh, is the cancellation of an award, and I want to uh, read into the record a correction uh, in, your, in your packet. The project number for this project that we're recommending uh, cancellation on is SSP-NBIP, 539 in parentheses PM. The JP number is 232-8413 in parentheses. I think your packet says 04. That should be 13 in parentheses. And it's also recognizes call order 540 on the May 19th bid opening. Uh, at, the, at the June 6, 20, uh, 2022 commission meeting, the subject project was awarded to Key Painting LLC. Subsequent to this award, the contractor failed to return the executed contract to ODOT within the time specified in the state statutes and in the bid proposal. It is therefore recommended at this time that the award be canceled and that the project be rebid at a date to be determined. Furthermore, it is recommended that the, the, bid, the, the bid bond which accompanied the bid an amount equal to 5% of the contract amount be collected by the department for compensation for administrative costs. Part B of the presentation is our recommendation for awards from the June 16th bid opening. It is recommended that the following items from the June 16th bid opening referred to by call order be awarded. That's call order 710, 715, 725, 730, 735, 740, 750, 755, 765, 770, 780, 785, 795, 800, 805, 810, 825, 830, 835, 845, 850, and 855. And lastly, it is recommended that the following items in the June bid opening referred to by call order be rejected. It's call order 720, 775, 790, and 832. This concludes the recommendations for award and your approval is requested. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval of item number 100? Move that item be approved. LaForge. Second, Dyson. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Pa the vote passed uh, with the unanimous vote. Item number 101 is the director's report. Secretary Gatz. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, appreciate your consideration this morning of the county improvements for roads and bridges uh, plan, CRB plan. That program uh, across the, the decade uh, previous has been a very well-received improvement uh, on the county road system. Uh, it's one of the most critical aspects of investment back into the county system. And uh, again, it's a, I, I commend Shelley and her team 
uh, certainly the county commissioners and uh, Brandy Robinson and ACO for all the work that everybody does around trying to make sure we get good projects into that plan and that we subsequently get those projects delivered. Uh, so again, pretty excited about the opportunities that are presented there. Uh, there are deficiencies out on the county road system that we need to be attentive to. And likewise, uh, the bridge formula program funding and to reemphasize, Shelley has worked on a plan there that will direct $28 million a year of the 53 million that the state of Oklahoma is going to receive to off system bridges, uh, both on the county system and the municipal system. Uh, the commitment of those resources at that level is not something that should be taken lightly. Uh, that's a true commitment uh, of the Department of Transportation to try to help with the off system bridge issues. And again, they're to be commended for developing a program around uh, off system bridges and putting that focus on it. So I appreciate your consideration and your acknowledgement of that uh, program growing, going forward. Uh, and then also, very similarly, uh, the Municipal Road Drilling Activity Revolving Fund. That's a small amount of money, a $5 million uh, commitment to the revolving fund and another program that the department is charged with administering uh, that we don't necessarily have jurisdiction over. Uh, but again, it's the criticality of the municipal road system that's often impacted by that drilling activity uh, that we're trying to be attentive to. So uh, again, that's something that uh, I want to acknowledge and, and uh, appreciate uh, Shelley and the work that they're going to do in the local government division going forward to manage that. A um, couple of the up and coming projects that were on the reward list that you considered this morning that are pretty important, uh, US 281, the Bridgeport Bridge. Uh, out in western Oklahoma uh, is the iconic uh, truss bridge that has been uh, load posted for as long as I can remember. Uh, this is a very unique project that will replace that iconic bridge uh, with a bridge that doesn't have to be load posted, brand new, uh, but also that still uses the historic trusses to give the historic look and feel uh, to that Route 66 facility uh, that it's always had. Uh, and again, I think that was a very elegantly and carefully crafted project uh, that gets at a, a bridge there that's been a problem for the department for many, many years. So I appreciate your consideration of that award uh, and also recognize that that was uh, the recipient of a federal grant uh, to help us improve that location. Also, I-44 and US-169 interchange in Tulsa, uh, another phase of work within that interchange area. Uh, Commissioner Peterson, certainly you recognize the traffic volumes and levels that uh, Highway 169 carries north towards Owasso uh, and south. Uh, so again, this is a very important project in the context of the 169 corridor. We've got more in the program and more to come. Uh, and again, I know District 8 is, is very uniquely focused on uh, trying to make improvements in that corridor. The Turnpike Authority's request, uh, I appreciate very much your consideration of that this morning. Uh, certainly, Commissioner Grimsley, we are absolutely respectful of, of your vote and your opinion on the subject matter. Uh, I would note, though, that I have a very high level of confidence in the engineers that I work with, uh, both at the Turnpike Authority and the Department of Transportation, and their capability in understanding what traffic projections and traffic volumes are going to do. Uh, so again, it's something we do not take this lightly. Uh, it's something that we will go through a very deliberate process moving forward, and it will not be something that happens quick. This is something that will be lengthy. Uh, we've got a lot of engineering work, a lot of environmental, cultural resource work, and uh, a tremendous amount of effort ahead of us. So again, I appreciate your consideration of the Turnpike Authority item this morning. And I would close uh, by uh, giving you a little bit of an update. We are well underway with our eight-year construction work plan rebalancing process. And uh, we've had our first meeting with the district engineers. Uh, very productive. Uh, the district engineers this year are very well prepared. And from the fiscal side, I'd tell you that we put more effort into understanding what the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is going to bring to the department uh, from the federal funding side. Uh, and also understanding what our state funding capabilities are going to be uh, 
than any time probably in my tenure. Uh, Shelly Hilmes, as the CFO of the department, has been intimately involved in, and uh, for that matter, all of our division managers on the state side have been engaged and involved in the state budgeting process, and that's something I'm proud of. And uh, good work all around, but the result of that will be a very refined eight-year construction work plan that we will eventually present to you. And uh, look forward to continuing our work around uh, getting that back and rebalance. Our target is September to present the eight-year construction work plan to you for your consideration. Uh, obviously, we'll have several meetings between now and then in preparation. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have of me. Any commissioners have any questions? If not, uh, do I hear a motion for adjournment? Motion, Dyson. Second. Second Coburn. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown? McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.